Good morning, guys. Good morning. It is harvest season 2024. We are kicking off full-fledged soybean season today. Uh, we got a lot of acres to pound out up north. Now, I know we have been harvesting on and off, but we haven't officially kicked off harvest daily every single day. We've been doing lots of other odds and ends jobs, but this is basically the start and probably continuation soybean harvest, corn harvest, and what all comes with that, breakdowns, all that. We've already experienced a motor that blew a hole in the side. If you did not watch that video, I highly suggest going back and watching that. On top of that, guys, we have something super exciting uh, that we've been working on that we are gonna roll out here very shortly. Um, our new intro video that uh, I know the our editing team, uh, great guys have been working hard on it and uh, we worked hard on filming it. So it's kind of exciting, new season. Uh, we're gonna kick it off. So before we get into this and uh, show you what blew apart on this machine last night, here's the intro video. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and uh, I hope you guys enjoy our harvest season as much as we do. I'm ready, but I have no idea what we're doing. I need the Swede. Where's the Swede? We're just all here getting it done. Do you need to seek medical attention? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I might lose my temper. That's a prostate. Uh, you'll find out. <laughs> forward, forward! That didn't take much. Chet Larson? You never know what we're gonna get into, right, Doug? Ah! You're in the rhubarb! I'm having fun. Well, I imagine by now you guys uh, have seen the new intro. Hope you liked it. I'm sure you'll see a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, I think. We're gonna get today kicked off. I'll show you shortly what happened to my machine. I'm gonna check the new motor oil and coolant on here before we fire them up. Mine's gotta go in the shop. This one just needs to be greased and checked coolant and oil. Looks like coolant is within spec. So, right here, brand new $99,000 motor. $99,000, $100,000. Gonna be over that once the labor is in, in on that. But the only good news is we don't have to pay for it because we have Power Guard. Thank God. Woo. We're good. We are good. She don't burn oil, guys. Imagine that. Brand new. It sure shouldn't. It sure shouldn't. And on the bright side, yesterday this thing ran all day and we never, uh, never blew apart any hoses, no clamps. As of now, nothing has been forgotten to be tightened, which makes me very happy. Look at this mess. Doesn't that look like a fire? We'll just drive right to the toolbox. How's that sound? So I want to uh, show you guys so that hopefully I can help somebody. Hopefully I can help some poor soul out there uh, and advise them to check this on your dear machine. This happened and this did not happen this badly, but we caught it on big wheels last year, 790. Um, it just had wheels, AKA big wheels. And this rock trap door, so this, this is the rock trap. This is supposed to be able to be opened with this said lever here. And that drops this pan open, so that's where the rocks are supposed to go instead of through your machine if you accidentally ingest one. This here door is another access panel that you can fold down, which they have bolted. You know, you see this nice lever here, supposed to be able to drop it. No, you gotta unbolt it. Um, and for whatever reason, both corners split out. If you can see the carnage there, both corners split out. And I was doing some headlands last night and got back to the main rows. My gosh, I'm missing 20 bushel. Like it went from 45 to 55 and it was 35. I'm like, 
something's not right. So then started the diagnosing, throwing the pan behind the combine, thought maybe I was in some green stuff, thought something plugged up or check my sieve. I had zero losses behind the machine, throwing the pan. Got home last night after combining maybe 10 acres like that. Thank God that was it. Or looked under here and here there was a three inch gap that all the product was. I don't know if the product was coming out, but I guarantee you there was loose beans coming out. So that was a nice way to end my night last night, knowing the losses were so great. So nonetheless, check this door. Make sure there's no cracking or rippage. Wow. So I think Eric's in town doing some paperwork at the FSA office, so I think he's gonna order this or get this. They have three, two or three of them on hand, so it must be a common issue. <laughs> it's working well, Jordan. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> oh, man. Getting that pin out is... Uh, Sounds like my knees in the morning. <laughs> you might want to see medical attention if it sounds like that. This, this ain't working. <laughs> I'm shoot some WD-40 in there. Well, that wasn't too bad after all. Nothing like some junk right away in the morning. All right, the work's piling up, waiting for parts there. I greased this combine. Did you grease this one? Yes. Even the lovely spot up there? The rotor? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so is the joy, ain't it? Well, my greaser were pointed towards the outside, so it was kind of nice. <laughs> nice. Mine was straight down, naturally. <laughs> so these are cameras um, that, from the cab, we can see our clean grain, our return elevator, what's in them. The black beans have uh, turned, the lens is all full of mud. So we need to, well, he's taking them apart on this machine. I'm gonna do this one so that we can actually see and automation will work properly today because I'm hoping for a big day. So this is the camera. Oh, it's hard to stand here. You pop this out. There's the little lens on this probably very overpriced camera, but it is a feature that I absolutely love. It really helps set the combine, and then also if you choose to use autonomy mode, that's what it runs off of. Okay, this machine is done, except for the rock trap door, which Eric's getting parts for. I got that put together, saved you the pain of watching that process. Uh, it's time to roll. We got green light, we're out of here. Sandwich season. It was very delicious until, uh, until the meat fell out on the ground. Look at that. How disappointing. Now I got some bread and butter to eat and one piece of meat, my dear meats on the floor. Great way to start out breakfast. We're migrating north into the nice square big field, so should be able to get a lot done today. It is 10.22 in the morning. We'll see how far we can get. I'm back doing what I'm used to do, used to doing, and that's mapping tile lines. And I actually haven't seen this outlet yet, but it it is very, very clean. And that's big pipe there. We did not physically put this in. Uh, the neighbors 40 to the north, which drains down this way, when we worked with them on a project and the different company put in all the pipe. But I am out here now, parked kind of like a pool, but it was a pick your poison moment. I gotta get as close to the outlet as I can to try to map the whole thing. And so if I nose up here, well then that means I started at the other end, which goes through a road. So I couldn't get close to that either. This is an old driveway that goes up to a grove site where no one lives. and. It was a little less steep of a ditch, so I figured I could back across that. I've got the 5200, got an RTK globe on the old 9530, and uh, pretty much till the line to smooth it out and map it at the same time. It's 
Pretty slick, actually. Oh, and I gotta do four fields. Told you guys I had picked my poison. He almost went into the dirt there. It's close enough. There you can see it. I'll load that into our op center and then we'll have it for forever, for eternity. It'll be in that op center. You guys also know how we love our tile inlets and mapping little interior boundaries around them. Well, they added an inlet. I'm about to drive it over. That's good. And tile inlet. So now it added a flag there. Wow, technology. You know, instead of watching, you guys could come out and help. Yeah. Pick rocks. No shortage of them. All right, we're cutting. I got the uh, north headland off. It's always so satisfying doing the first breakthrough through the field. And it is happening, currently happening. They are taller than expected. So speed is not going to be something we will be able to push too hard, I don't think, anyways, in this field. are you going pretty good. Northeast, southwest. Hopefully the wind don't change on us again, Brody. We normally pick a line and then the wind changes halfway through the day. Yeah, I think we'll be hauling these to the farm, storing them at the farm. Right or wrong, I don't know, market's crap. So might as well put them in the grain bin, I guess. That's what they're there for. All right, two out of four fields done. Tiny little seep lines. And two spots on the field. So that one was quick and easy. Now I'm going to a field that we did just like in the last few days, kind of a couple day project, but uh, there was an existing tile out there that we had to try to find, and I've never had to close up so many holes with a bobcat afterwards. So just kind of digging around looking for old tile. Well guys, it's that time of the day again. Time to fuel the body up. So today, we're gonna have ourselves a, a factor meal and a protein shake. By the way, if you haven't seen, we finally got Jordan a, uh, a kitchen up here. One year after he started working here, he finally got a kitchen. But that brings us to today's meal. This is a Gourmet Plus meal from Factor. Just gonna pop this in here, put it in two minutes. Let that cook. While that's going, I'm gonna test this out. Oh wow, this is really good actually. This is a cold brew. Tastes like iced coffee, but it's protein shape. So if you guys have any interest in Factor, I suggest going to uh, the link in the description or factor75.com and uh, check out what they all have there. While you're there, if you wanna make an order, you can get 50% off using Larson 50 and 20% off any future orders in the next month. Now, these aren't some cheap meals you pick up at a gas station. Their chicken is actually good, juicy, flavorful, and uh, very healthy. Chef prepared and dietitian designed meals. Right to your door, ready in two minutes. Mmm, very good. So once again, guys, if you have any interest, go to factor75.com or go to the link in the description. Use Larson50. Get 50% off your first order, 20% off your next month's boxes. And thanks again, Factor, sponsoring today's video. All right, we are uh, cranking pretty good. We're still trying to fine tune. Neither me or Brody are satisfied at all with our sample. Um, I don't, the camera and the glare issue that we always experience together. Um, see how many pods are in there. Brody's got the same thing, so he's running the Bushel Plus um, concaves. I've got the Estes concaves, and Bushel Plus's sales pitch is 
no pods in the tank, so I know he's on the phone with them trying to figure it out. I'm just trying different settings. What I don't understand is they look, they look a lot more ready looking out the window than what I see coming into the grain tank. And as far as moisture goes, I mean, we're at 10%. Yeah, they're ready, but yet there's pods out here on the plants that are not ready. And that's where we're struggling to thrash, I would say, is what we're doing. I'm trying to send them as many through the rethrasher as possible. Um, so that's through the tailing system. So if you close your bottom sieve down, you start pushing those, those bigger pods back through the rethrasher. But then I look at my tailings here, I'm getting split beans in my tailings, loose beans, which is telling me I'm too flat. I'm, my beans are going through the rethrasher, that loose beans that I don't want. But if I open that up more, my tank gets worse. Decisions. I've actually gotten to the point here where we put autonomy on and we're gonna see if it can figure it out because we've tried a lot of stuff. And I don't want these against our Ben wall. That's our problem because then rotting, rotting can happen and rust the Ben wall. So I don't know. We're gonna find out, I guess. Keep tweaking on them. Maybe the fact of the matter is it just is what it is with the condition that it is. So this thing is telling me, showing me them little orange highlighted ones are splits, showing me splits which I know because I'm running really tight, really fast, trying to grind them out. Creating FM, but that just is horrible. Horrible sample as far as I'm concerned. Off he goes. So, things have been going pretty good. I figured I'd better talk to you guys so I wake up getting a little little bit of the blank staring, not paying attention, tired feeling coming on. Uh, we are just about wrapped up this field. I've got one more pass. Brody's working on a strip over there, right along the fence line. He's got maybe one round left. So detach heads down the road, one and a half miles to the next one. So I get this button set up. It makes that sound. And then the combine adjusts its speed uh, according to engine load. So that is uh, last last year when we went down and got to see the new 830 and show you guys all that um, and got to see the new S700 series, no, S7 series uh, combines. Basically what they integrated is cameras on the cab so that it looks at the crop and says, well, should I drive fast, faster? Should I be slowing down and predetermining how the speed goes? Where this just goes off engine load. So a lot of times I'm coming along, going along and I'm like, well, I can see this is a green spot. This is, we ain't gonna charge into this at five miles an hour. So this is nice if you're in steady crops, maybe a little variation, but like corn seems to be a pretty good feature for this. I would be interested to see what the new system is like with the cameras and then the overlaying of the map and all that. If you know anything about deer, what they got going on there. It sounds like an interesting concept to me. It'd be kind of cool to see in action. Sample is, uh, as it's getting drier today, we are getting rid of some pods. The automation here has, uh, let's see if you've been doing anything. No, it, it's, it plays with the, uh, concave a little bit but it has not changed anything really to help me out that that just means I know how to set a combine right yeah look at the tank look at how well I can set a combine <laughs> well this is just something else per near the wettest spot of this farm I'm kicking up dust I'm in here with a t-tractor which you'd be asking for a death wish to do this any other time tile everything everything it's working so well this is where i could not physically spray all summer because i would have been absolutely buried and yeah i'm just flowing right across on rail on rail
Look at the leaves. We're almost to the walking platform up here. Out of control. I might have to walk them all down with the silver. I'm going to be doing some tillage out here after I'm done mapping. Okay, I've got 40,000 feet of tile mapped on this farm. And now we are going back and forth. There is enough weeds and whatnot that, as you can see, that needs to be tilled up so that it's ready for spring. And it's really doing a nice job. The way this T-Tractor's set up, I'm in 14th gear, eight and a half miles an hour. If I go to 15th, it's kind of a big jump. So eight and a half miles an hour is what she's gonna do. I don't know, that looks great. This is kind of into the sun, but see where I've done the tile lines. Now we're just going at a slight tillage angle. This is where it's, yeah, that's pretty thick hair of the dog weeds there. Going right through it. Never been able to do this before. She's going her down, she's popping. Okay, we're detached. While we were detaching, I got to looking because I'm like, i telling Randy 46 bushel soybeans is what the monitors have and I think we got them dialed in pretty good now. Uh, and I'm like, they're, they're tall. They pull hard, but they just don't yield. And I found this one and this one on the bean header. Now let's take a look here. You like to see a minimum of three beans per pod Oh, look at this. Two bean, uh, one beaner, three bean, two bean, one bean, three, one bean and a three bean. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of singles. And look at this whole cluster is all two beans. And I grabbed half a dozen, dozen of them and looked at them all. And they're all like this. So they just ran out of time, planted in, uh, in June, they just didn't have the time to... It's amazing how the plants know that. Uh, soybeans go off of sunlight, they know, oh, we're late, we need to abort. Um, like there's one here I seen, like this one. This one here is definitely setting himself up for a two bean, but decided to give up on it. Disappointing, but what do you expect? You know what we are what we are planting into? What do you expect? Great yield when you're not starting it out well due to mud and late planting. You can't expect 60 bushel soybeans when you put them through conditions like they were put through. All right, we're rolling out. Next quarter, get that one knocked out. And hopefully, under the third quarter tonight. Hopefully, won't finish it, but. Hopefully get moved in there. I want to add one more thing into that little conversation. This was an 08 bean variety uh, maturity. So also if you're not directly involved in farming, you can plant different varieties. Um, this was an 08 maturity. Nope, 09, 09 maturity. That's kind of about the earliest that we plant. Uh, we plant one one fours, one twos, and oh nines is kind of our common. And we backed out a lot of our one fours this year and went to oh nines knowing the season wasn't gonna be that long. Which was a good decision. So what well, but I haven't we haven't been into any uh, one twos or one fours yet, so maybe it'll get better. Let's hope. I think I'm gonna order another one of them blower things. Oh my god, sprayer rot. Wow! I guess I wasn't paying the best attention to my air and it plugged up. I think some beans fell down on it and then it stopped turning and then that's why that spins. It keeps the debris from building up. And boy, I tell you, I noticed that right away. Yep, there's the culprit. Well, and just like that, we're at the next field done two quarters and gonna pull into the third one here and this is one of our cornfields dead ahead look at that that don't look promising <laughs> well guys hours have passed nothing bad happened nothing dramatic happened just combining uh, what do we got here we did 105 acres in this field we are up to a 43 
bushel per acre field average. So it's seeming like uh, soybean yields are going to be in the 40s. The last field was 39.5 is what the combines had it at. Uh, so 40 to 46 bushel soybeans are where the field averages have been so far, which is disappointing, but is can't change it, is what it is. We did about 390 acres today, which is an awesome, it's not our first field of soybeans, uh, our first day, it's our first full day of soybeans, so I don't feel like that's a bad start at all. At this rate, we should be done with soybeans by, uh, well, do I dare, I, I'm not even gonna say, not gonna say because when you start making expectations, that's when disappointment happens and we just aren't gonna do that, right? Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to uh, subscribe and check in in the next video as we continue forward with harvest. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again and uh, have a safe harvest. We'll catch you next time. Coming up on Larson Farms. It's smoking in the air! <laughs> well, that didn't take long to whoop off. Well, I got some bad news. Self-inflicted damage to the machine.